Thank you. Oh, of course, our next speaker, Angelo from the Sea Center chapter. Okay. First of all, thanks for being here. Uh, I will present to you um, a new project, a brand new project, which is named TAG, uh, a new law interaction on a client. My name is Angelo De Leo and I'm part of uh, the C Center chapter on that project, obviously. Uh, these are a few notes about me, but maybe they are not so important, so I will skip it. Uh, the agenda of today. Uh, first of all, a general introduction uh, about uh, why we need uh, only client technologies uh, in the first place. Uh, then uh, I will talk about only client technologies, the differences between low interaction on the client and high interaction on the clients. And then uh, I will start talking about the real stuff of today, which is TAG, uh, this new low interaction on the client. I will conclude with the future work, future to-dos, and uh, I will show you uh, a demo of uh, TAG in action. Okay, new trends, new tools. Uh, in the last years, uh, uh, we are seeing more and more attacks against client systems. Um, this is due to the fact that the browser is uh, obviously the most popular client system deployed on every hand user system. And uh, uh, because of this, uh, it is um, uh, one of the preferred targets uh, of the attacks. Um, a lot of vulnerabilities are identified daily in uh, browsers, uh, but even in, um, in the third-party plugins and uh, in add-ons. Um, the browser is uh, uh, a, good, uh, a good target for attacks uh, because, uh, uh, as I said before, everyone has a browser deployed on his uh, uh, and user machine and uh, because uh, um, client uh, systems and user systems uh, are not so deeply, um, how can I say, uh, analyzed. Uh, for example, if you think about uh, uh, servers uh, which are used for uh, providing services uh, um, they are usually protected by intrusion detection, intrusion prevention system, and other uh, active defenses uh, like this one. Um, this is not the same for browser, and in particular, uh, this is the reason why um, the attacks are moving towards client system. Um, the end user is, uh, as always, the weakest link of the security chain uh, because uh, he, he or she uh, is not uh, really aware of all the risks uh, of, for example, simply web surfing a web page, uh, uh, as uh, Lucas said you before. Uh, talking about his mom. And uh, uh, new tools are required to learn more about such client-side attacks. And uh, this is the reason why we need only clients in the first place. And uh, uh, what we need is something which, uh, like, uh, th the same way um, as you um, already know, maybe, uh, when we talk about uh, classical on onipot systems, uh, the uh, server onipots, uh, we need something which is really similar, something which uh, seems like a real browser uh, and uh, behaves like, like a real browser, uh, but uh, it's not a real browser. Um, and uh, um, in, uh, uh, it is not a browser in the common sense of the word. Um, it is a browser, but it is, it is instrumented in order to detect and emulate what's happening, uh, uh, what's happening to uh, a potential end system. Um, the question is, a real system, so an eye interaction on the client, or an emulated one, so a low interaction one? Both, as, uh, both have uh, their strengths and weaknesses. For example, if we talk about low interaction on the clients, uh, uh, the strengths of low interaction on the clients, uh, and the first one is that we can uh, easily uh, emulate different browser personalities, so different version of different browsers. Uh, for example, different version of Internet Explorer. We'll see that uh, currently TAG supports six 
uh, different personalities for Internet Explorer, but even different ones. So if you want to emulate uh, Chrome or uh, Firefox, uh, we can do it uh, quite easily. Um, it's really not true that it's quite easy, but uh, we can do it. We can emulate different ActiveX plugin uh, active controls and plugin modules. And this is uh, really important because uh, there are a few vulnerabilities uh, which target specific version of ActiveX controls, specific version of plugin modules. So uh, having uh, an emulated system is quite flexible for us because uh, it allows us to uh, emulate what happens uh, in different uh, scenarios with a browser with a, a particular version of a plugin and, and different one. It's much more safer because uh, uh, in the system is completely, the browser is completely emulated. So, for example, uh, we'll see later, uh, Internet Explorer is emulated on a Linux machine. So, the possibility, the, the dangers are not existing. There is, there is uh, no real possibility of compromising the machine. And it's much more scalable because, uh, uh, as we'll see later, uh, our interaction on the clients are real machine, uh, usually virtual machines, which are instrumented. But uh, uh, running them uh, requires, uh, for example, taking a snapshot of the virtual machine, uh, analyzing the URL, then reverting the snapshot. So uh, it doesn't scale uh, um, really well. The weakness is that low interaction on the client are easier to detect because everything is emulated. So um, the, if the emulation is good, it's much more difficult to detect it, but it's not impossible because these are not real systems. Our interaction on the clients, uh, the strengths, no emulation is necessary. They are real systems. So uh, the classification uh, of the exploit is much more accurate. And there is the possibility to detect zero-day attacks and it's much more difficult to evade because we are talking about a real system. The weaknesses, uh, as I said before, just one version for browser and plugins. So if you want to know how, um, uh, how a browser with a particular version of the GRE uh, behaves against uh, a particular web page, you have to have uh, uh, two instances of the virtual machine, as I said before. It's much more dangerous because we are talking about a real system, so uh, and as such, it could be compromised. And obviously, uh, it's much more computationally expensive. Uh, I will talk. Uh, I talked to you um, before. First of all, a brief history of the project. Uh, um, I started. Uh, I started uh, contributing and learning uh, um, to Phony C. Uh, Phony C is uh, uh, a low interaction on the client as well, which was released by Jose Nazario in uh, 2009. And I started contributing on learning uh, uh, about uh, this field a few months later in November. Um, while working on Phony C, we realized a few of the limitations of the original design. I will talk about it later uh, when uh, I will talk about the document object model and uh, when I will talk about the JavaScript engine uh, used by TUG. Uh, and so I started thinking about a new design with the first months of the last year, uh, the first commit uh, here on May of the last year. Okay. Let's talk about the document object model. Um, here you can find uh, the definition of the document object model in uh, W3C sp uh, of, um, specification. Um, the specification says that uh, it is a platform and language neutral interface uh, which allows programs and scripts to dynamically access and update the content structure and style of the documents. Um, the, um, having a precise DOM implementation is really key for a low interaction on the client. And we realized it while developing Phony C. Um, Phony C uh, had not, uh, um, not a complete DOM implementation, and in particular, it lacked uh, support for the interfaces as defined in the specification. And that meant that uh, we had to chase exploit writers as soon as a new uh, exploit kit version uh, came out, as soon as a new uh, exploit kit uh, came out. Tag uh, implements a DOM which is almost compliant with the W3C DOM core and HTML specification level 1, 2 and partially 3. Uh, and I'm currently working on supporting uh, DOM events specification. It, it is starting to be 
quite difficult uh, for the really simple reason that Internet Explorer seems to be not compliant at all with DOM events. So I have uh, really uh, so I, I have to to code uh, uh, the DOM events specification and then adapt them to Internet Explorer, which is starting to be not an easy task. Uh, and then it's partially compliant with style specification. It was designed as if my real task was to code a browser. So I started thinking this way and implemented the DOM this way. Uh, so you can find in the code uh, all the interfaces of a real browser. Sometimes they are just placeholders and uh, they could be uh, coded later. But the idea is to have uh, an implementation which is much more compliant, which is really compliant with the specification. Currently, these are the personalities which are supported by TAG. Uh, you can see that uh, um, just Internet Explorer is um, is emulated on two different platforms, which are Windows XP and 2K. Uh, specifically speaking, it, it's quite easy to add new personalities. In most of ca in most cases, uh, it is just a, a matter of adding five, six lines of code. Uh, there are a few behaviors which differ from a version to another, but uh, talking about Internet Explorer, um, it's not so much work. Uh, I'm currently planning uh, of implementing Firefox support and Chrome support uh, within TAG. Uh, in particular, Chrome support should be quite easy to add because, as we'll see later, uh, I'm using as JavaScript engine Google V8, which is the uh, JavaScript engine used by Chrome. So it should be uh, quite easy. As I was saying, JavaScript, Google, Google Voy JavaScript engine is used a wrapper to a project which is PyView8, which is a, a wrapper uh, written by Fleolu. Um, I chose uh, uh, V8. V8 uh, um, was chosen because of this great flexibility and because of uh, a few features which are really, uh, which are really cool. Um, in particular, you can um, read on the slide that uh, this, uh, this JavaScript engine uh, runs on Windows, Mac OS X, uh, Linux systems uh, on different platforms. And so, uh, and so it's, quite, it's quite cool for this reason. But there are a few features which I currently use that m made my life simple simple while developing TAG. For example, the abstract syntax regeneration and inspection. Uh, the AST generation and inspection is uh, uh, greatly used during static analysis. As we'll see later, TAG makes use of a mixed approach of static and dynamic analysis. And having a, a, an API which allows you to build uh, quite easily uh, AST and quite easily to inspect it, uh, it was great beneficial for me. Context inspection, uh, um, it's used for dynamic analysis. And there are a lot of other potentially interesting features, for example, GDB JIT interface, live object inspection, code disassembling, which are exported to a clean and well documented and designed API. So uh, my choice was for V8 because of all these reasons. Uh, TAG is based on the idea of vulnerability modules the same way as phone EC. So uh, we have uh, Python-based vulnerability modules which emulate uh, ActiveX controls, curve browser functionalities and browser plugins. Everything is emulated. Uh, uh, I try to em emulate everything. For example, I try to emulate even the, the availability of Java on the browser and uh, it requires just a few lines of code. And this is the core, maybe. Uh, yes, not maybe, <laughs> really. Um, TAG is based on a, a mixed approach, static analysis and dynamic analysis. Static analysis makes use of the abstract syntax tree, which is built to the V8 API. Um, the static analysis uh, could, be, uh, could be divided into two interesting points. The first point is the static attack signatures. Uh, if some of you uh, has take a look at, um, at uh, the WebAWET paper, which talks about how WebAWET guys detect attacks uh, uh, to static analysis, uh, you can easily realize that we are talking about mostly about the same thing. Uh, in particular, for example, uh, through the AST, you can see, for example, uh, uh, a simple metric is uh, evaluate, which is the length of a string 
passed to the evolve function. And if the, this length uh, is greater than a threshold you define, this can be a symptom of uh, uh, the fact that you are analyzing an exploit, you are phasing an exploit. This is the static attack signature, which is probably the less interesting part of the game. Uh, the most interesting part is the identification of interesting breakpoints for later dynamic analysis. Uh, I, I said to you that uh, the, the analysis is, uh, is a mix. Um, in, this, in this stage, uh, the, the JavaScript code is uh, uh, statically analyzed, and I try to identify interesting point where to um, insert uh, breakpoints during dynamic analysis. Just an example for understanding what I'm talking about. If you think about a typical heap spraying scenario, uh, you know that uh, the heap is sprayed uh, typically with uh, a loop, uh, which could be a for loop, a while loop, or something like that. Uh, if you think about this, uh, uh, this snippet of code, this typical snippet of code, you can easily realize that uh, the most interesting point where to set a breakpoint is just after the loop. So when you are analyzing the code dynamically uh, in view 8 later, you could run the code within interrupting, uh, without interrupting it and break just on that instruction. When you break on that instruction, you have the possibility, as I said before, to live inspect what, I what is in memory, in variables. Uh, you can access the whole context, the whole JavaScript context. And uh, this is the most efficient to do, to do it, the most efficient way to do it. Uh, so you break an interesting point and you analyze uh, uh, what is in the context, uh, and you could extract uh, uh, information about potential shell codes which are in the context uh, or something like that. Uh, dynamic analysis makes use, for doing it, makes use of the View8 debugger protocol, which is another cool feature embedded in uh, uh, View8, and uh, Libimu, which is used for shell code detection and emulation. Let's talk about logging. Logging, uh, there are a few logging formats right now. Uh, the logging is compliant uh, with my uh, MAIC uh, format. Um, this is uh, the, the official logging format right now. Um, uh, tag logs even in uh, uh, flat log files, not so exciting, uh, I know. And uh, even in MongoDB instance, if needed. Um, both uh, Ose and Lucas uh, talked about HP feeds. Uh, um, tag is ready for this. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, there are two specific HP feed ch channels, which are tag events channel and tag files channel. In tag events channel, a dual analysis result is published in um, MAIC format, and uh, uh, in tag files, the downloaded samples uh, are uh, shared with other researchers. Um, this is done because, uh, for example, there are a few systems which uh, really need uh, uh, downloaded samples. For example, sandbox like uh, Cuckoo, uh, which need these samples, and so they are shared uh, automatically. And the tag events channel is, uh, uh, is meant for um, analysts which want to analyze, uh, which want to, to have access to your analysis uh, results. Future work. Uh, obviously, document object model improvements. I think that I will code uh, improvements in the DOM for the years to come. Then JavaScript dynamic uh, analysis improvements. Uh, full integration with HP feeds infrastructure. And then uh, uh, I'm currently evaluating the possibility to, to do exploit kits identification, maybe through machine learning, or VBScript dynamic analysis, or malicious PDF jar, or flash files, and uh, possibly even uh, using anomaly-based approach. Uh, I have not listed it, but I'm uh, even considering uh, the possibility to make multi-path execution analysis. I forgot to include it. And uh, just, to, uh, just to end this presentation, uh, uh, for the really simple reason that uh, the last million uh, demos I did failed, 
I, uh, I chose to uh, make a static snapshot of a demo in order to be uh, everybody happy. And this is a, 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 real, uh, a real black hole URL. It was, uh, it was online uh, at uh, the beginning of March. Uh, here you can see just the, the logs uh, which you would see uh, using the tool in interactive mode in your shell, but uh, you have to consider that uh, all this information are logged uh, the way I told you before. Uh, for the first lines, uh, um, the first line uh, you can see that uh, uh, these lines. Uh, in this first line, Black Hole is serving you uh, an applet, which is uh, uh, trying to exploit um, a Java runtime environment uh, uh, vulnerability, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, it is uh, 2010, uh, the CVAE, which refers to this kind of vulnerability. In this case, you can see that, uh, you see that the second line, that the Apple t is saved for later analysis. As I said before, there is no, uh, no JAR analysis right now, but the file is saved in order to allow you to uh, analyze it uh, uh, offline with your own tools or automatically if you have tools to make it. The next lines, uh, where you see a known active X object, um, these, uh, um, these lines are generated because Black Hole is currently using uh, a JavaScript uh, script, which is uh, named Plugin Detect, uh, which is used for detecting the versions of all the plugins uh, which your browser uh, supports. And in particular, you say that uh, uh, it is trying to uh, understand which version of Shockwave Flash is installed on your browser. Uh, I'm emulating currently version 10, and you can see that the loop ends uh, after uh, version 11 uh, brum, testing, fingerprinting. Uh, after that, these lines, uh, with the only exception of the last line, a typical MDAC exploit, which makes use of a few uh, ActiveX control. You can see that uh, the, the file, this is a, a real executable, and this should be a Tor pick, but I'm not sure about it, uh, is saved uh, on your local machine for later analysis. And when, uh, uh, when, this, op when this happens, this file is uh, uh, shared on HP Fits 2 in order to be analyzed by other systems which are interested in it. The last line, so you can see, you can, uh, um, see all uh, the operations which are done. So the file is fetched, then it's saved to, uh, with this uh, path, and then it tries to execute. Obviously, nothing is executed uh, uh, actually on the machine. The last line um, is uh, uh, the log for a PDF file. Here, uh, the a PDF file is, uh, uh, is served, and uh, uh, it is another exploit, uh, which is uh, saved just like uh, the jar file uh, before. This is another exploit, and this is an exploit uh, uh, against the uh, Microsoft Windows Help, Server, Help Center uh, protocol. As you can see, it is identified um, it is identified uh, in the first two lines, and then, uh, um, and then uh, it is emulated. Um, maybe um, it's too much for both. Uh, as you can see, there are two stages. The first stage is, is emulate, and then there is a, a second stage which starts from here because uh, there is an, a file which is downloaded, which is another VB script, which is emulated here. And you can see the net effect here. Uh, this is the same executable as before. If you, uh, if you compare the ashes, they are the same ones. So the same executable is downloaded uh, twice. And then uh, the, last, uh, the last exploit is an exploit against uh, Flash. 
you can see that uh, the file is served, uh, this uh, field WSVF, and uh, um, all the parameters uh, are saved in order to let you uh, analyze the file later in offline analysis or with, uh, with the tool you have available. Um, and the emulation stops here. Uh, currently, Black Hole is perfectly emulated by TAG. There are uh, a few exploit kits which are uh, uh, correctly emulated. Uh, Black Hole, which is the most trendy one, is perfectly emulated. Uh, um, okay. These are a few references in order to, um, to understand how a Honey client works and uh, in order to understand the technology which is uh, behind uh, TAG. Okay, mm, the source code will be released uh, after this presentation. You uh, can download it uh, at mm, the URL uh, on GitHub and uh, uh, it will be available later today. So be sure to clone your copy and to play with it. Uh, Comments and feedback, obviously, are welcome. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, even even in uh, during today, feel free to stop me if there is no time. I, I don't know if we are short in time or not. If, I, if there's time, feel free to make any questions. Thanks for the attention.